Y'all look at somebody and tell you you're looking good. You if I have to close one eye to say it. <laughs> I heard what I'm going to say. You don't have to close both eyes to say it. Wow. God is so good. Thank you, brother. All the time. God is good. Y'all stand good. Shake somebody's hand. Y'all get up. Shake somebody's hand. Clap them on the back. Kick them in the shin. Do something. Yeah, I'll make up. Long way to. Because they had all the steroids, 
And then when it, when it quit on Tuesday, it quit hard. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a quit. It was a slam the door in her face. Amen. But, but she started cracking the door up a little bit yesterday. And last night, she can't hold meals down. She had me to hold a meal down. But last night, she wanted a steak. So I cooked a steak on the grill. And it wasn't a mistake. It was a steak. <laughs> and she, she ate part of it. But whatever she ate, she held down. Amen. So that was good. Amen. And uh, that's right. That's yeah. right. But if I have to cook steak on the grill every night, well. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> there are worse things. I couldn't have to cook butter beans every night. Amen. <laughs> it takes place whenever we have to kind of play it by her. Play it by her. I mean, she. We've been we kind of. Bethany sets the schedule at this moment. Amen. Pray for her because tomorrow she gets some more MRIs on her spine, and and uh, and then Tuesday all day we're going to be in Greenville in the morning. So pray for her because we have to go to cancer clinics and all kinds of things. But but Bethany is one of the strongest young ladies I've ever met in my entire life. And, and uh, I thought I had faith, and I thought I could stand up and smile at the worst of, of things. But like I told somebody the other day, I said, some people, if they got the diagnosis Bethany did, they go ahead and pack their bags and sleep on, and sleep on the steps of the funeral line. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Bethany keeps saying, 10 word prayer, Dad. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I hear that about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. Amen. And I hear this too. <clears throat> God's got this, Dad. God's got this. Amen. And so when I tell her she's got this, she says she can't. I said, God's got this. <laughs> Amen. Get your Bibles out. Uh, this is going to be kind of a wild sermon. Some of y'all are going to look at it and think, did he take a picture at our house last night? <laughs> was, he, was he living in our back room from last week or two or maybe from last month? Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. If you can't find Hebrews, turn to Matthew and head toward Revelation. When you get close to Revelation, when you hear the Revelation start squeaking, you're getting close. How many in here have a perfect life? Raise your hand. How many in here never have any problems? How many in here everything always goes according to plan? <laughs> I like what Jeannie's got in her office there. It says, just because you have pain doesn't mean you have to be one. <laughs> That's cool. That's right, I, 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 I quoted that to Bethany just a couple of times. <laughs> Bethany, just because you got pain, you ain't got to be one. says, I'm not that. Okay. Ready? Hebrews, chapter 12. Look at her laugh. <laughs> Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14. Stand for the reading of the word. It's very short. One sentence. Now this was taken so out of context in the old time Pentecostal that honestly, uh, I always missed what it was saying until I decided to start looking up the Bible for myself and reading it and studying it. And after a lot of study and after getting through a lot of stuff I have found out, this is, a, this is so powerful. This is one of the most powerful verses in the scripture. And if we'll pay attention to it, we can really make a difference for us. Amen. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, that you're alive and well on the throne. Father, I know, God, that you've got all things together. You are able in all things, Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint in such a way that we'll know, God, that we have been with you, Lord. And we'll know, Lord, that you've got our back. And we know, Lord, that we can live a life that pleases you. In the name of Jesus, we love you. And we praise your name. The church said? Amen. For the way that gets my high five, low five, low five, four and a half, four and a quarter, whatever you got, go ahead and give more. Tell them God loves you. You can be seen. You know, uh, <laughs> y'all going to like this.
I see marriage is agreeing with you. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah, I won't show that one again. Look, just hit one back up. Look, very good. I'll give you the whole thing there. I see the nurse is talking to the man in the bed. I see marriage is agreeing with you. <laughs> How many? That guy ain't, I ain't heard the amens. I saw some people looking real funny. I saw some going. Well, like this, amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> but this, y'all think I'm talking about wedding or marriage. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about all relationships. I'm talking about relationships with you and your wife. I just love that picture. That was just awesome. Uh, uh, I'm talking about relationship between you and your wife, relationship between you and your children, relationships between you and your spouse, your employer, uh, your, your co-workers, uh, your neighbors. This is something that's going to help you talk to anybody, anytime, anywhere. The Bible says, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. See, so, see, so, see, so, uh, uh, of course, holiness is to be like God. It's to be, be, be sanctified, set apart for use for God. All right, so I talked about if you're wearing ear bobs and if you got on shirt sleeves down to here, not, no, just throw that stuff out the window. Because when that was written, a lot of times men, the priests wore skirts, amen? So let's just leave that alone, okay? What it is, 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 watch this. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The word holiness means to be set apart for his purpose, to be, to, to show the world that you're set apart for his purpose, that you are, you are, you, you are sanctified and holy unto him. And, and then if you're not, then the world cannot see the Lord in you. Plus, watch this, it says follow peace with all men. The word follow means to run after, to chase after peace with all men. That word peace is not just you and someone else is getting along. Watch this. That word is Uranian, which means to bind together that which has been separated. It's what, uh, 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 it's, a, it's actually a medical term. It means to set a broken bone. It means literally to, to piece back a piece of broken skin and sew it back together. So it is a medical term of healing. So follow peace. Chase after healing with all men and, and, and with all men and women. And you do it in such a way that pleases God. Wow. That's a whole different way. Look at that scripture. Isn't it? You seek your best to follow healing with all people, to, to heal relationships. But at the same time, you do it in such a way that it glorifies God. Follow peace with all men and holiness. You make sure that when you do this, it pleases God. If I come up behind you and I see you, uh, I don't think you're living right now, I beat you with a hammer. That is not, I'm not following peace, number one. And number two, that is not holiness. Amen. I might see God. They may see stars, but I can see God. So it's important that we understand this principle. Saying, you know, uh, uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, a man passed by a cage at the zoo, and he noticed in the cage there was both a large lion and an active monkey. He saw a zoo worker nearby and asked, how does that work, having both a lion and a monkey in the same cage? He says, it works okay for the most part. He said, do they ever not get along? He says, every once in a while, the, 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 that happens. Uh, the, 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 that happens, and what, what you do? He said, we get a new monkey. Think about it. Every once in a while they don't get along. It's so all we do. The monkey's dead. We'll just go grab another one. Amen. And so there's a lot of people in this world today. You just want to go ahead and, and train in your wife or train in your children or train in your job or train in whatever because things are not going the way you think they should. And if I train it, things are going to get better. But I've talked to hundreds of people, hundreds of people that come to me and told me, I thought if I could just change my wife or change my job or change whatever, things would get better and it didn't get better, they got worse. No, it didn't get worse. Now, in all of this, now I've got regret because I shouldn't have messed up and then threw it all away because I held on to it. Maybe things that have got better. So here it goes. Watch. Watch this down. Follow peace with all men. Run to bring peace to set a bone, to, to stitch, up a, stitch up a relationship, whatever you can, to, to make a relationship work. Did I say you stay in an abusive relationship? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying in a normal, a normal uh, relationship with your workers, your co-workers, whatever, uh, with your spouse, with your children, then in a normal situation, I'm not talking about abnormal, then you do your best to bring peace into that relationship. Or you can be like the, be like the zookeeper who just keeps putting monkeys in the cage with the lion. Amen? So I'm going to give you some principles. Matter of fact, I, let me ask you a question here. 
This is a pretty cool question. You see this piece of the puzzle, people are standing together. How would you like to see a positive difference in any and all of your relationships? Any and all. That's pretty broad, isn't it? Any relationship and all relationships. How would you like to see a positive difference in every last one of them? You know, it's been amazing to me. We have met some amazing friends. We've had an awesome time uh, at the Cancer Center in Greenville. And we have met a lot of wonderful, wonderful people. And, and, and everybody's so up. And it's just such an awesome place. And everybody seems to really, really care. And, and, and we've made a lot of good relationships with some people. And, I mean, it's got no people come out and step out behind the desk and come, come, come to us. Shake our hands and love on us. And say, man, I'm glad to see you today. You know, inside I'm thinking, I wish I weren't here. But on the outside I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to tell them, if I'm, or tell myself, I'm, I'm going to have to be here. I want to make the most of it. I want God to get glory out of it. Amen? So now, snap, so watch this now. The way you communicate, I love that. Can you see that picture? <laughs> it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I want y'all to pay attention. He took some bullets and wrote out a sorry on them. How is that apology going to be accepted? Is that going to be received good? If I got to wear a bulletproof vest for you to tell me how you're sorry, I don't want you talking to me. If I've got to live in such a way that I've got to be afraid, or the way you say it, look, 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 like, dear, have you got a, dear, is everything okay? Have you got a problem? No, I ain't got a problem. How say it's going? It's a burger! Can't you tell? It's not what you say. I've heard people tell me, well, I told him I was sorry. Oh, like that? <clears throat> sure. That really went over well. Let me see. Have, have, have you got any pliers? You can pull out his fingernails while you're telling him. Amen. It's not what you say. It's how you say, at least somebody tell them that. Here's your chance to tell somebody this. Get the preacher talking to the devil. You might want to tell somebody this for a long time. Find the person you want to tell. And here it is. Ready? <laughs> it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Tell somebody else. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Amen? That, that, don't you feel better? Amen. Ready? <laughs> so I says now. Communication can be, can be positive, negative. Or it can be positive. Did you know that? Sometimes it's negative and positive in the same conversation. You know, like, I really like your work, but I'm firing you. <laughs> you like to work, but you're firing me. Okay, that was positive and negative. A whole lot more negative than positive. Amen. All right, here we go. I want you to watch this now. When you have, and this is with anybody, your spouse, your co-workers, your children, when you have negative communication with them, number one, it is very discouraging. I wrote down cannibal beside it. What does a cannibal do? He eats up people. How many of you have ever Beetlejuice and that little thing standing beside Beetlejuice or that other people when they're waiting in line and that little guy had his head shrunk? Cannibals have got a hold of him. Amen? Say, so, say, so when, when, when we begin to use negative communication, it gets very discouraging as a cannibal because it begins to eat away peace, it eats away hope, it eats away trust, it eats away so many things because it is a cannibal. You cannot constantly take out your thirty or your your thirty or your thirty eight special, load it full of bullets that have sorry written on it, shoot people, and expect everything to be okay. It is not going to work. So, so, so here goes. So, it's, it's, it's a cannibal. Now, there's a cannibal. Distrust. Now, when people talk to you, they have a kind of caution. There are certain people when I talk to, I always kind of talk to them. Honestly, they may not see it on the outside, but on the inside, I'm doing this. Y'all got people like that? Because, you know, at any time, they can disrupt like a volcano and just spew lava on you. So, so you kind of thought this. So, so, so negative is a cannibal. It causes you to be very cautious when you talk to these people. It, it, it causes disharmony because now you really can't communicate. 
Communicate is two-way communication, two-way two -way information transfer. That's why communication is two-way information transfer. It is a dialogue. And so in order for the dialogue, the two-way communication to work, then there has to be two ways. And if you're, if you're screaming at me, if you're beating me down, if you can't say anything good to me, I can promise you, you can talk to me. I might look at you and I might smile, but on the inside, I have already shut down. I know I'm the only one in here like this. Try it sometime. When your spouse is laying you out, when you're laying them out, when you're laying somebody else out, or you're not looking, and you're sitting talking to them, and they, you know what they've done? They've done shut the door. You're talking and talking and talking, they ain't heard a word you said because they shut the door. They, it's called self-preservation. They have decided to psychologically uh, 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 preserve their self. And so mentally and, psycho mentally and psychologically, uh, they shut down to prevent any further damage. Okay? Now, 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 watch this. It also causes disruption. Because look, once the cannibal starts eating, then, as the cannibal's eating, I start being cautious. Now that I start being cautious, pretty soon communication breaks up. And it's not going to be long before communication just ceases. Don't even talk to me. I don't even want to talk to you. I know you've never heard anybody say that to you, have you? You've never said that to anybody else, I'm pretty sure. So when you see this stuff going on, and... You know what's going on. You need to go back to that scripture. Follow peace with all men. And wholeness without which no man shall see the Lord. I need to do my best to stitch it up. Do my best to do CPR. Do my best to, to, to bail out the boat. To bring out the stitches. And do it in a way that pleases God. So, 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 so. Watch this. Positive. Now is encouragement. Because the positive, you're talking positive, now you start, you kind of feel kind of good inside of you. You're talking to somebody, you're trying to figure out a problem, you're trying to get something going, whatever. You, you got this problem between two of you, you got a problem at a job or in your family. As you begin to open up positive and talk to each other, first there's encouragement. Not only is there encouragement, but there's also, oh, I got a little happy there, trigger happy. There's trust versus distrust. There's harmony, and instead of disruption, there's connection. Have you ever said something about certain people, I just connect with them? Do you know why you connect with them? It's because they encourage you. You trust them. There's harmony, and it builds a connection. It's very important to remember this. We're also busy thinking about what the other person did that we don't realize a lot of this. We have a, a lot of control over. Amen? I got more control over what I'm going through or how I handle it. I can't control what I'm going through, but I can control how I handle it. 10% is what I'm going through. 90% is how I handle it and respond. So I've got a bigger role in this. Okay. So, so now, let, let's go through this. I'm only going to do five principles today for two reasons. One for time and two. I don't know if you can handle more than five at a time. Ready? Look at somebody say, he's just joking. They might have said, no, he ain't. <laughs> 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 All right, here you go. Principle number one. Proverbs 23 7 says, For as a man thinketh in his head, or his heart, so no, his head, as he thinketh in his heart, so we see, remember I told you about the heart was? It was your mind, your emotions, it was your courage. So, 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 so it's all of you. So, so as a man thinketh in the heart, so is he. Meaning, you may talk about me, you may say about me, but until it gets to my heart, I don't have to believe it. Amen? You know, do you know that, 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 that the mighty elephant is held? Have you ever been to the circus? We have. You look at the circus or see it on television. The mighty elephant is held by one band around his back foot with one little chain tapped in the ground. They use that elephant to build the tent. They use that elephant to take the tent down. But that one elephant is held by that one itty bitty chain. You know why it's held by that chain? Because when it was younger and could not move it. Now, I mean, it's just like this, look, and pull that chain up. But when it was younger, it was that chain was put on it when it couldn't move. And so until it could move, every day it was put on that chain and trained to believe it could, could not get out of that, train, that, that, that chain. And what happened is when it got old enough to be able to get out of it, it was already in its hand that it couldn't get out. 
So here's the elephant. It can take up the tent, take down the tent. I mean, Hannibal used it across the mountain, scared the guys half to death. Some of the amazing things he does. It's like having a bulldozer and a crane all at one time. But it's held by that little bitty thing because in its heart, it thinks it can't do it. Some of y'all in here have got some itty bitty chains holding you down. Wow. Itty bitty chains. But in your heart, you think you can't get out of it. And because of that, you live a life. I want to move forward, God, but I got this thing holding me back. I want to move forward. God says, all you got to do is trust me. The ten word prayer, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So now, now, here we go. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Let me, let me tell you a little secret here. You might, not, you might not have thought of this. I want you to think of it today. And I want you just to come in here with a clean slate and, and an open mind. And I want you to think about something. Watch this. Principle number one. We see people through our own lens. Have you ever seen two or three of your friends here and somebody comes up and one person automatically likes him, one person automatically dislikes him, one person even hates him, and another person's just falling down in his feet. You wonder why is there so many differences in response? He acted the same all at one time to all of us. One of us likes him, one of us is falling down in his feet, one of us doesn't like him, one of us hates him. Why? Because we see people through the lens of our own heart. And because we see people through our own eyes, it's very possible that you've got problems with people that it should not be problems with. You've got problems in, in, in wherever, in your home, on your job, in church, wherever. You've got problems, but it's not problems to everybody else, but it's to you. And why is it problems? Because you see everything through the filter of your own heart, mind, eyes. And so, so, so watch this. Watch this. This is good stuff. It'll make you grow. The way you see yourself and the way you see your life, watch this, shapes how you see and relate to others. How I see myself, if I'm held down, I expect you to be held down by the same thing that's holding me down. You have no right to pull up that chain that's around your ankle. You should be like me. You should be tied to the tent by the ankle. Well, who do you think they are? Or if there's somebody that's got a personality close like yours, and all of a sudden they start doing like you would normally do, here it goes again. You're looking through the lens of your own self. All of a sudden you don't like that guy. So, so, so here we go again. Watch this. Look. Uh, I did some of this on a Tuesday night, so I'm going to this one thing right here, so I'm going to do it again right now real quick. This is how you, see, how you see yourself, watch this, it affects your self-awareness. Now, self-awareness doesn't mean that so I'm in church today. I'm aware I'm in church today. But self-awareness is, watch this, where am I at in life? Self-awareness. When I was 20 years old, you know, then I was married. And, and when I was 20 years old, uh, uh, I was thinking about kids and all that, you know. When I was 20 years old, when I was 17 years old, I could care less about having a family. I could care less because I didn't even think about that. But as each step went along the way. After we had D.C., all of a sudden, my self-awareness changed. Now I'm a father. I've got somebody dependent on me. i got to watch it. You know, just like the other day, Bethany, Bethany just popped me right in the mouth. She don't even know how she did it. I'm going to tell her right now. You didn't literally pop me in the mouth, girl. She looked at me like, what I was talking junk about something. And I said, and I just, as normal like we always do, whatever little pride, it was a little bitty thing too. I said, that, 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 that thing right there is going to put me in the grave. And Bethany said, don't do that, Dad. I really need you right now. You're stared by the words of your own mouth. And there I was. I actually was just doing something. Actually, I didn't mean it was going to actually kill me, but it sounded like I meant it was going to kill me. And it was something silly. And so, so again, you know, Ben said, Dad, Dad, please, I, I need you right now. Do not do anything to harm yourself. And I thought about that thing, and then I said, you know what? i got to watch while I talk around her, because I don't want to feel like, you know, that, that, that she's not going to have me here. So, so, so here it goes. Your self-awareness. Where am I? Let me ask you a question. Where are you at today? 
Think about it. Where, where are you at? Are you in a good place? Are you in a safe place? I'm not talking about every Christian church. And here you're in a good place and a safe place. I'm talking about in your life. Where are you? Are you in a good place? Are you in a safe place? Do you have safety around you, but you can't see the safe because all you can see is the one little bad? Am I gonna am I gonna focus on the, the little hole in the road or am I gonna focus on the beautiful scenery around me? Well yeah. Number two, self-esteem. Uh, who am I? We fight, every last one of us fight this all the time. I try my best to, to push my boys and push Bethany, push my boys and Bethany. I pushed them, pushed them, pushed them, and kept telling them how good they were. And they, I didn't give them false stuff. I gave them the real stuff. I mean, I made sure that they really had to show themselves. Not just, I can do anything, Dad, didn't do anything. This was not just show up and get a trophy. They got the trophy when they did what they were supposed to do. But now all their life, they've heard this. Where am I? Who am I? The self-worth. Am I good enough? It's all in your heart. Because I can tell you, once you figure out where you are, and then once you figure out, hey, I'm a child of God. Who am I? I'm a child of God. Yes, I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a pastor. I'm a counselor. I'm a college student. But I'm also a child of God. And because I'm a child of God, I can handle all things through Christ for strength. Because I'm a child of God, I'm not doing anything that comes against me. Because I'm a child of God! Satan will attack, but Satan will lose. Am I good enough? That's your number one question. Some of y'all in here, that's your number one question every day. Am I good enough? You ain't got to raise your hand, please don't. Your number one question is, am I good enough? Guess what? On my own, I'm not. Don't remember Easter? This is everybody come up and put their I am guilty as charged, their sins up on this cross. Because of this cross, I'm good enough. It's not what I've done, it's what he's done. Amen? So now, now I know I told y'all I can't be careful on these five. I'm going to show you through the five of them. We've got plenty of time, though. Ready? Sorry, I'm going to please her. <laughs> Once I, once I figure out where I am, who I am, and I am good enough, what does is, what I figure out that with good, bad, or ugly, it establishes the foundation of all your relationships. So if you don't know who you are, you don't know if you're good enough, you don't know where you are, then that's going to affect every relationship you're in. Because now I, don't know how, I can't give myself to anything because I don't know where I belong. I don't have an anchor, I don't have a footing. So many people in this world, especially this day and time, they, can, they have a problem with commitment. And the reason they have a problem with commitment is because they don't know where they are, they don't know who they are, and they don't think they're good enough. And so they won't commit. Once you realize you're a child of God, you can have all things to Him. And if you're not a mistake, you're not a burden, that God has got you in here for a special purpose, special time. You're here today because of something. God's got you in the palm of His hand. And he says, no man will snatch it out. All right? So now, now, whether you see the cup is half full or half empty, it's going to transfer on every other relationship. I used to, years ago, I used to say the cup was half empty. Now, I said, then I said the cup is half full. I got a better one now. The cup needs some water. And I got the water. Amen. So again, this is just, look, whereas he thinketh in his heart, so we'll see. Principle number one, you see people through your own eyes. If that person's aggravating you, sometimes it's because you see something in them that you don't like about them. Get ready. <laughs> I'm going to throw one more out there. Sometimes, all the time, people are mirrors. And why, you know, have you noticed, I never noticed how many Chrysler Supremes were out there on the road until I started driving one. I thought there were like two or three out there. Now I see one every third car. When I was driving a Toyota, I didn't realize how many cameras were until I started driving a Toyota. I didn't realize how many cameras were the color mine was, and I can't even tell what color it is, but those look like it. <laughs> when people get before you and a trait pops out of them that automatically, subconsciously, registers in you that they are doing something that you do and maybe you didn't realize you didn't like it in your own self and you see it in them, 
it makes you aggravated. Maybe, just maybe, it would help to go look in the mirror, in the bathroom, go look in the mirror, especially if nobody's around so they won't think you're a fruitcake, and say, God, what I was looking at with that person was a mirror. Help me to change me first. All right? Good stuff. Is it good stuff? It's good stuff. Okay. Three people said it was. The rest of you. Wait, wait, they got out in the back right there. No, please. I did it one time. I said, well, you, Mr. I mean, Brother Tom, you wake up, Brother Brother Smith, and say, I ain't going to do it. You put him to sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Principle number two. I see this. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that I can remove the mountain, but have not love, I'm nothing. Watch this. Principle number two. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I can do all this stuff. I can, have, I can understand all kinds of things. I, mean, I can understand whatever problem you got, I can throw it out there. But until you show me you care about me, you're just, I, I just hear a bunch of noise. I remember watching one time uh, uh, on Frazier. They were calling Eddie, little Eddie, talking to Eddie, and her, or his dad's talking to Eddie, and they're trying to get Eddie to do something. And all Eddie heard was blah, 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 Eddie. Blah, 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 Eddie. Because he didn't understand the rest of the words. Blah, 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 Eddie. He said, I don't understand why Eddie's not doing it, because all he hears is blah, 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 Eddie. And so and when he goes to his two psychiatrist sons to, to explain it to them, they start explaining what's going on with this big old psychological terms, and now you hear, blah, 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 dad. Blah, 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 dad. Blah, 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 dad. When you go to people and you think you're the answer man, you go to people and think you know it and you want to, you're just ready to spew out that knowledge. Have you ever noticed sometimes people just shut you down before you ever open your mouth good? Don't want to hear what you got to say? It's not because, listen, it's not because they don't want to know what you know. It's because they don't feel that you care. Bye. Banzai. If I know you care, even if I don't have to necessarily agree with you, I'll listen to you because I know you care. You don't do it because you care for me. If you walk around like you're God's gift to the world and you ain't got time, you're going to stop just long enough for me to touch the hem of your garment, you're going to keep on moving? Uh -uh. I ain't got time for that. Don't waste my time with that. If I know you care, I'm going to listen. That's how a lot of people are. You wonder why people want to listen to you. Sometimes it is because you're breasted. <laughs> Sometimes it's because they don't feel that you care. You just want to show them how much knowledge you got. You see, if you care, you're not telling them because you want to help them. You're telling them because you just want to show them what you know. All right? So, so, so here we go. I'm, look, I'm almost through. We got five. We got, this is little number two. So we're getting close. Yeah. I'm going to give you another little, little, little trick. Ready? Get ready. Caring about people is not all I'm in. It's not. And I'm going to tell you another <laughs> little trick. Not everyone cares. Amen? Look at that. Caring about everybody is not automatic. Not everybody cares. We can't learn to care. It's not a skill. We can learn to be a caregiver. There's a lot of caregivers. Have you ever gone to, to the nursing home and seen a caregiver that cared and a caregiver that didn't? Have you even gone to the hospital and seen a caregiver that cared and a caregiver that didn't? Go to a doctor's office and see a doctor. A caregiver that can't, that does can, can give you care, but they don't care. Have you ever seen that? What do you feel like? They don't care. They're just here trying to show me something, trying to get me out of here. You know, uh, uh, I saw a person one time. They were they were told in the doctor's office. They said, "Look, we we need you to go home and write down all all the things they they were having some some major problems in some of their skeletal system." 
And so they were told, I want you to go home and write it all down and come back and we're going to address them one by one by one because we've got to figure out what this problem is so you can walk again. And so they walked into the doctor's office and the doctor came in and said, now talk to me. And so the person pulled out a piece of paper and had like five items on it to talk about the skeletal system, just like the doctor said. But it was the doctor, not his, not his physician's assistant. Physician's assistant up there now. And physician's assistant looks at it and says, Flip the piece of paper, so I'm still doing this. They said, well, y'all told me to write this all down and bring it to you because you were going to address each one so you can find out why this chronic problem is not being addressed, fixed, because it's not being addressed properly. We're treating symptoms, not the disease. And the, and the physician assistant took it and threw it back and said, I ain't got time for this. This is a five-minute visit, or 15-minute visit, whatever it was. Says, so let me just give you something for pain, and sometime later we can talk about it. That person changed doctors the next day. Because she was following the doctor's orders. And then when she got there, they really didn't care. Wow. People got to know you care. Okay? They got to know this. So I can't teach you to care. I can teach you how to give care, but I can't teach you to care. That's, that comes from the, that, that's from the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? That's a gift from God, right? So now, so now watch this. But you can decide, I'm going to care. And if I decide I'm going to care, then God will do it. Watch this. I fact, I ask God this all the time. God, God, help me be more caring. Especially with somebody that I really, really rather not be around. Or somebody I really don't have a lot of likes. I'm not talking about somebody I see things in the end of my sitting. I'm not talking about that. Sometimes there's just people that you don't necessarily want to be around. They're not your best buds. You know, they, they have different interests. You know, uh, and you don't have that same kind of interest, so you don't really spend a lot of time together. But when I'm with them, I say, God, help me be more caring to this person. This person needs to know that I care in order that I can give care. Remember, people are, you can give all the care you want, but they're not going to receive that care until they know you care. This is, I'm telling you, this is good stuff. Awesome stuff. My friend, you know what I was going to preach on this week? was the second coming of Christ. And the Lord hit me with this a few days ago. And I said, well, uh, you can preach on the second coming after you preach on this. So, all right, here we go. Maybe let's get you ready for the second coming. How about that? Principle number three. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. In other words, God gave us two years in one mouth. He wants us to listen twice as much as we talk. You ever notice all the stuff he gives us spares? Okay, so here goes out, you got no one. This eye goes out, you got no one. This hand goes out, you got no one. It gave us one mouth. I get more trouble with that mouth than anything. My eyes, my hands, anything. That mouth, okay? So, 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 watch this. Now, principle number three. This is good stuff. Believe it or not, it'll make you grow. Matter of fact, this is like that stuff, miracle grow. This will make you grow fast. So, principle number three. Learn to listen from your heart. Here's one of the hardest things that I had to learn. And I still have to catch myself. And I, the people that I'm in close relationship, I tell them, if you feel that I'm not doing this, you stop me and tell me because I will readjust. Because I do not want you feeling that I'm not listening to what you're saying. So now watch this. Watch this. Have you ever talked to somebody and they're like this? Like a bulldog on a chain, and they don't really want to hear what you got to say. They just want you to give them, they want to wait for you to go, <gasps> sleep and jump in. Okay, so watch, watch this, watch. One of the greatest gifts you can give somebody is to truly listen to them. Did you know that? Now, there's two ways we can have a conversation, two ways, and, and when I find myself in this position, I even ask people, please tell me if you feel like I'm doing this. And, and I have. So watch, watch. You can listen to understand or listen to respond. If I'm listening to understand, watch this. I lean forward. I got my eyes on them. If it's appropriate, I got my hand on appropriate. I got my hand on on their hand or my hand on their shoulder. Uh, and, and, and I make facial expressions. It's called active listening. And, and I sort of know, you know, and I'm saying, tell me more. And then I, then I repeat back to them what they've told me. So they don't listen. Oh, so you're saying you're having a hard time with this? Well, tell me why. And you said this, this, this. Well, let's talk about this. You know, and I'm listening. That's listening and understanding. But well, you know, there's a lot of people who don't do that. Again, they're like the bulldog on the chain. Go ahead. Say what you got to say. Get out of my way. 
because I got something to say. Before you even tell me the problem, I've already got the answer. If you're going to tell a joke, I'm going to pop the punchline on you. If you're going to, if you're going to do something else, I'm going to do this. I can't stand for you to keep talking. Look, I got to talk. You know why? Because I'm not listening to understand. I'm listening to respond. Now, when you start doing that, guess what else you do? You shut down communication. People quit talking. Why am I going to talk if you ain't going to listen? Every time I talk to you, what you're going to do is, before I can even finish my sentence, you finish my sentence for me, and then you start telling me all this stuff, and I never get a chance to even tell you how I really felt. You know, it's like, the, it's like the, the pastor that was doing the funeral for one of his best friends, and while he's doing the funeral for the best friend, he says, I know it happened so abruptly, I know everybody, they weren't expecting this, and I know it's a big shock to everybody, he says it's a shock to me, we've been friends for a long time. He said, I was right there in intensive care with him when he died, matter of fact, I was wearing this suit. And he said, you know what? He gave me a note just before he died. And I, it's an intimate moment. I want to share it with all of y'all. So he pulls up and says, Pastor, get off my arse I can't breathe. <laughs> You're standing on the oxygen, Pastor. Get off. Okay. You see, he weren't listening to understand. He was listening to respond. All right? So now, watch Listening to understand communicates value. If you want somebody to really feel like you really care about them, listen to understand. Because when you do that, you're giving them a gift. You give them a very powerful gift. Because remember, people's self-esteem, self-worth, and, and self-awareness is all at stake. And you help build that, or you can help tear that down, by if you're listening to understand, or you just want them to throw out two or three words and shut up so I can talk. Then there's, there's all those people. There's, there's other people that you get around and they go, they, they just crowd the whole conversation about them. Then they go, look, enough of me talking about me. You talk about me for a little while. <laughs> okay. It requires listening from the heart and you make a level at the soul connection. That's why David and Jonathan were so close because they talked to each other. They were, you know, that's why if a husband and wife are really close, it's because they talk to each other. They connect. They listen to understand. They don't listen to respond. I challenge you today, before this day is over with, you don't have to call them all up on the phone and tell them, but you, every time you get around, from here on out, you get around, especially when you're close people, like your family members or your wife or your husband or whoever, you tell them, look, I'm trying my best to learn to listen to understand. And if you have, at any time, I want to give you the gift of listening. Oh, God. Fellas, that puts you right at the front of the list, okay? With your wife. It puts you at the top. I want to give you the gift of listening. Wow. You could give her a diamond ring. You could give her candy. You can give whatever. But you know what? That means nothing compared to I want to give you the gift of listening. And so... Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. If ever we're having a conversation and you don't feel like I am listening, please tell me so I can make adjustments because I don't want you to feel like I've already given you the gift. And as you're opening up the present, I don't want you to open it up and it's not going to be there in empty box. All right? So now, no, 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 we're getting close. Look, your communication, or you communicate empathy, interest, and desire to be helpful far more by listening by your word than by your words. There's been a many a time, a many a time, I didn't know what to say. So I just stayed there with him. Just stayed. Cried with him. Laughed with him. And later on I hear, get a card in the mail or something that says, you know exactly what to say, Pastor. Thank you so much. I didn't say anything. The connection was made here, not here. Very important in communication. Principle number three. I'm, I, I told you, if I'd gone 10, we'd be here for quite a while. All right. Love bears, I should have put love up there, but it's a continuation of the other one. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So, what's this? Here's a hard one. Believing the best in people usually brings out the best in people. If I think you're a big old mess up and I let you know that by my actions and or by my words, then you're going to be a big old mess up. But if I tell you you're worth something, that you're something, that you got gifts, 
that, that God is just just hit, hit the tip of the iceberg. You know, I, I've gone through Walmart and made it a very, very, very special thing to do with these guys that are putting up the stock. Bethany told me they don't get paid on anything and they're out there all those hours. And and so, uh, and I see them out there working and I heard one guy say, I was sitting there getting coffee and I was trying to figure out which one of coffee was at and I was like, just long enough to hear the conversation. And one of the guys says, we don't get paid enough to be out here. He says, I don't know why I'm even out here. And he said, you know, I really want to do something else, but this is all I can do right now because I haven't gone to college, blah, blah, blah. And you know, so I'm kind of just stuck. So I'm going to just give them eight hours, and they better be glad they're getting eight hours. And you know me, I don't like to butt in. <laughs> and so I pulled the guy to me. I put my arm around him. I mean, thinking, who's this guy? I said, can I tell you how to get hit this company? Maybe not become a manager, but you might become a manager this way, but you one thing, it'll lead to a better job. He said, what's that? I said, you just, I, just, I didn't mean to hear your conversation, but you were talking so loud. And I mean, I didn't get to get, I mean, I was down from here to there from him. That's how loud he was. I said, and, and, and you're miserable. He said, yes, I am. They don't pay me enough, blah, 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 blah. I said, part of this is all Walmart's fault. The other part of this is your fault. Huh? <laughs> I said, honestly, if I was your boss man heard you talking like this, I'd come by and probably fire you. So go get you another job somewhere if you can't like this. Or you're gonna give me eight hours if I'm lucky. Go find you one. I'm gonna set you free, little one. He said, excuse me. I said, but you know what? If I come by and heard you say, you know what? It's not going to be the best job in the world, but thank God I've got this job. Because i got friends that don't have a job. And I sit back and say, you know what, this is not necessarily where I want to end up at. But I'm, but I'm looking for right now, I'm not looking down the road right now. This is providing me with my money, and it's providing me spending money, and I'm getting an opportunity to learn, and, and I'll meet all these people, and I go to all this training. And you know what, this might not be where I want, want to be, but this is a good start. And I thank God for it. He went, wow. I said, you think you could try that? He said, yeah, that sure sounds a whole lot better. I said, guess what? I guarantee it. I'll put a guarantee. I'll sign it guarantee it to you. I said, you start talking like that, your actions will start acting like that. Because you're going you're to start acting yourself into what you just said. And, 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 and so as you start acting that way, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start getting raises. He said, raises? I said, yeah. I said, it's worth everywhere I went. I said, it worked with my boys everywhere they went. It works. Do it. He goes, I think I will. Next time I come by, he was going, he was going, look, he was, he was, he was whistling and putting stuff up on the shelf and going, hey, man, y'all tighten up. This is so awesome. Come on, we do better than that. We got this going on. I said, oh, I'm on it. And then, of course, there was some guys. One guy come by, and he was up on the ladder. And I said, oh, I see you climbing the corporate ladder. I looked down and said, yeah, right. Ha, 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 ha. I said, well, I don't believe him thinking I'm trying to be a smart aleck. So I come by every time I see it. I look for him specifically when I come to the store. And I specifically try to find something positive and nice and funny to say to him. And what I found out is I don't have to seek him out in the store anymore. When he sees me, he seeks me out. And I'll tell this guy something like, you know, I, I, one, guy was, one guy was really down one day. He was really, really down. And he was do putting it up, and I walked, by, walked past him, and I said, why are you looking down? He said, I just don't know. And I said, don't you know inside of you is a lion? It's a beast. He said, inside of you is a king. Aren't you a child of God? He said, I'm a child of God. I said, inside of you is a king. I said, so why are you letting this get you down? I said, matter of fact, this is just a training ground. There's going to be a time where you're going to take other people and you're going to train them and it's going to be awesome. You're going to grow, grow, grow because there's a champion inside of you. And he said, yeah. I said, yeah. And every time I see him, he comes in. He makes sure he walks over to me. And he does that. And I always tell him this. When you grow up, I'm going to be just like you. <laughs> Think about it. All right. So now, this I know this is longer than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be like a 10 minute sermon. Of course, I've never had a 10 minute sermon except for an Easter. 
Know what that. you look for in anybody, you'll find. If I want to look for understanding in you, I'll find it. If I want to look for hatred in you, I'll find it. Whatever I'm looking for in you, I'll find it. So if I come with a preconceived idea and I've already got in my mind you're a nothing, nobody, you're a troublemaker, and I'm going to look for troublemaker. If I'm going to go inside of you and you are a troublemaker, but I know there's something good inside of you, I'll find what's good inside of you. So, so again, you'll find what you look for in people. I'm going to hurry this up. Let me tell you this. We're all, we're all flawed. We're all imperfect. Anybody here perfect? Raise your hand. No. Amen. I'm glad you didn't raise your hand. Then I say, and then we're going to pray for those that have the problem of lying. <laughs> okay. When someone calls out the best, I found this out of fountain. <clears throat> I know I found this out of fountain. My wife taught me this even stronger. Uh, DC's mom was uh, teaching sixth grade, and there was a boy in there that had been pushed through every year. Never made above 60s. And they weren't like to give them a, they don't have to give you a, a graduation diploma now. They can just give you a certificate. You went to school 12 years. And they were just pushed him through. And then when they come to her, she's hard in math and science. And they said, just push him through. Everybody else does. He's not going to listen, blah, blah, blah. And Beverly looked at him one day, and she listened to him. And she found out he was hurt. And this is going to lead into my next one. But she found out he was hurt. And uh, when she found out he was hurt, I was going the wrong way. Praise God. Get back over here. The other way. The other way. Principle number four. Thank you. I hate when the little man in there ain't listening. <laughs> she started loving that boy. Just love him. He come to her table to talk to her, and she leaned over and do the act of listening. And sometimes she put her hand on his hand, and said, "You can do." And she just kept loving him and loving him. By the end of the year, that guy was making A's and B's in her class. And never made above sixties. But she called out the best in him. She kept saying, you can do this. I know you can. I know you've had a rough start, but you've got a great time, time now. I know things don't look good now, but look what's coming. And she called out the best in him. And called out the best. At the end of the year, they come to her and say, how can we make an A's and B's in your class nobody else? And she said, Y'all think about that. Y'all are trying to push him through. And I'm trying to push him up. That's a big deal. Okay, so now, look. Here it goes, principle number five. And I'm getting ready to close, I promise. If I don't close now, y'all can just, you know, give me a raspberry or something. I read it. This is the one I've really seen bad, especially this day and time. Hurting people hurt people. Did you know that? How can I tell when a hurting person is hurting somebody? How can I tell, how can I tell when, when things are going, this is bad in PTSD, this is very bad in PTSD. But not just PTSD, there's also another thing too. Watch this, watch this. When the response to a problem is greater than the issue at hand, the real issue is always something else. Hurting people hurt people. So I knock over, I remember it was a couple regarding Henry and Harrison Ford was a high powered lawyer and his daughter knocked over, knocked over a glass of water and he just jumped all over her and punished her and all this and after he got shot in the head, they had to help him start all over again. Now he's a gentle fellow, very gentle and he's also actually an awesome fellow now. And his daughter knocked over a cup of water and she said, ah! He said, really? They're over his water and he's not his over too. You see, uh, hurting people hurt people. Remember, if you just did something minor like turn over a glass of water and they act like you just shot somebody, you're not the problem. That glass of water's not the problem. The real problem's in them. They're hurting. They're dealing. And you're just the last straw. That's it. They may come on you like a ton of bricks. They may beat you all to pieces. But just remember, watch this. I'm going to tell you something. This is what you got to watch out for yourself. If I'm already hurt, i got to be careful how I talk to other people because I can get all upset over the minor stuff. 
and get major upset over minor stuff. But watch this. Right there. If you see major upset over minor stuff, get rid of it. They're hurt. So instead of me just getting mad and blowing all up, here's what I can do. I need to try to help get to the real issue. If it's possible, if I can get to it, even if I can't get to it, at least know there is another issue. Watch this. Believe it or not, people who are hurting don't want to hurt other people. I read all the way down there so you can see it. But it's like that lion with a thorn in his paw. Can't help it. That person's hurting. And so the minorest stuff is major. It's like PTSD. Everybody, is everybody a little PTSD? They're on quick response. They're at a high emotional level. They got a high adrenaline flowing all the time. And there you, the, 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 the PTSD can be called by car, over here by a car accident or a, 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 a molestation or whatever. But then you get overseas because you've been in a shootout and you may have got shot. And then, then you get over here and somebody spills a glass of water. And now, you know, uh, I remember one day Daniel told me, Daniel, Daniel was upset because our neighbor's dog, Rottweiler, not Rottweiler, a, a bull, a bull, got out. And Daniel went to get in his truck. We went to get his truck out of nowhere, come up on that, that, that boxer right up under his from under the truck and grabbed the back of his leg. Daniel turned around and shot at him. I said, Daniel, what's going on? He said, Daniel, when that thing grabbed my leg, he said, for, for, for a split second, I was back in the streets of Cobble and the Taliban was coming out. Dog. They weren't even trying to bite him. I think he was playing with him. the Taliban. You get the drift. Some of you are beating people up and they ain't done a thing to you. You come back to Kabul and you get on the possum track. It ain't the Taliban, it's a dog. Ask God first to help you with that. And number two, if you see somebody else the same way, realize there's something deeper there. You've got to figure out what this is. Go watch this. Instead of me attacking back, if I can help pull that thorn out, then I'll help them live better. But none of that, but I'll live better. Especially with that person. I have discovered over the years that a lot of people, and other people didn't want to be around because they were always hurting people, they just avoided them or hit back when all they should have done was stop and try to figure out or help them, love them back in and show them, hey, there is a better way. What's going on? Tell me. And eventually, it might have happened overnight, but eventually you can work this thing out. It's amazing what happens. Everybody's life gets better. So for the first five principles, I'm going to call them out. And if you want a copy of this, you can, I'll make sure you get a copy of this. Number one, we see, through, we see people through our own lens. As a man sees in his heart, or eyes thanks to the heart, there he is. Uh, uh, number two, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Some of us were, were signing brass and tinkling cymbal, don't even realize it. Number three, listen from the heart. The greatest gift you can give anybody is to listen. Listen to understand, not to respond. Principle number three or four, believe in the best in people, use it brings out the best in people. Principle number five, hurting people, hurt people. Think about this. It's a very powerful thing. DC, come on up here. Very powerful thing. I just want to jump in, shouting, ready to run down the aisle, sweating, holy sweat. But this one here is down to earth. It will help you communicate better and help you every relationship you got. Every one of them.